All right, how's it going, Neil? So today we're gonna to be talking about this server right here, which is a server that I bought that quite literally might fry itself anytime I turn it on. But even with all that, I still bought it. And I'll be honest with you, if you wanna get in the home lab business, I think you absolutely should look at a server like this, if not this exact one. So this right here is the Super Micro A1SAI. No idea what that string of numbers mean. I'm sure Super Micro does though. 275F. And it has a fatal flaw that could be on this server right here, which would render it entirely unable to boot randomly. That's because it's got an Intel Atom C2750. And so of those of you who are not in the NAS business back three or four years ago, you probably do not know about the Intel Atom bug as much as people do. So the Intel Atom bug was a bug that affected C series of chips. There are certain ones, they're all really old now. But what would happen is there was this bug, and I believe it was actually fundamentally hardwired into the logic on the board that caused one of the clocks to run way faster than it was supposed to and way more often. This is also a clock that nobody really used except for booting process. And so what would happen is these machines would run forever, burn out their clocks, and then they'd be fine until they tried to boot. And so it is known as the Atom bug because it affected so many. It affected a bunch of Synologies back in the day who were using this CPU, and it was a huge scale issue. This is actually one of those CPUs, and I'll be honest with you, even with that, I think this is a great buy. So I bought this thing off of eBay, shipped to my house for 250 bucks. Came with eight gigs of RAM and an SSD, tiny SSD. But it is such a great starter server. It is 1U without back rails, which is really useful if you wanna put it in a small box. It can upgrade to, I think, 64 gigs of RAM, which is way more than what most people would need if you just wanna virtualize some surfaces. It's got a single power supply that's ultra quiet. This whole thing running just sips power, and it also is super quiet. And so because of that, I think that this is a great server for tons of people. Right now, it's running my backup servers in my laundry room. And it's great, it's really low power, fits in that box, and it also is able to handle the small virtualization tasks I need to just run the house. It runs the smart home, and it also runs a backup backup DNS server, just in case anything happens. The reason I originally bought it, and I still plan to, is this is also a awesome, awesome, cheap starter firewall for people who wanna get up and running with PFSense. And so it's got a very easy build here that you can just use and get gigabit performance out of a PFSense build without spending crazy amounts of money, especially if you want a rack mounted solution. And so this thing is awesome. And while it does have the Intel Atom bug, there are two things that's going for it, which makes me feel okay about it. One, well, really three, I guess. One, it's in a home lab. If it goes down, I back up all my virtual machines to my Synology nightly, and so I can just boot it from the main build, no big deal. That's not a good reason for most people, but let's be honest here, you are not an enterprise. If you have some downtime because of hardware failure that happens maybe every couple of years, you're doing okay. Your downtime is definitely going to be due to your own fault nine times out of 10. Two, this server has been around for a while now. Those Intel Atom bug CPUs, it only affected about one in three of them, and it tended to kill them in about three years. This CPU was from 2015, I think. And so if it was running that entire time and it had that bug, it almost certainly would have been destroyed by then. And so there's a really good chance that it is totally gonna to be fine and it will run 24 seven till something else kills it. And finally three, there is a janky fix. I'm no expert on this, but essentially because that thing wore down and is really not that important, all you would have to do is cross a few wires to drop the voltage through that section to speed up the clock. And so people have done this and added resistors in there. And so that way they actually would have it running faster and working properly enough to boot. And so there is a fix for that if it does happen. And obviously if you're spending only 250 bucks on a server that is this quiet, 
it's not that big of a deal if it does fry itself and you are able to repair it yourself. It's a fun project. Well, let's go ahead and open her up and check it out. All right, and so why this system is just super awesome is it's just pretty much a regular computer. And honestly, that's why I'm trying to buy more super micro systems is super micro systems, they're really just computers that are in server cabinets. They're obviously built to server grade everything, but they're not locked down like Dell servers are. Here, you can just see, we've got a ton of SATA ports. We've got six SATA ports right there, all accessible. Extra RAM DIMMs. You can just throw whatever you need in here, and it's a regular computer. It'll just work. We've got a spare PCIe card, and so I'm actually probably gonna change out this right here from being a little hard drive bay. So right now, it's you. this bay is just used for hard drive for whatever reason you wanna hot swap it. But what I wanna do is I wanna change this to a riser, and so I can put a 10 gig PCIe card in there. And so it's just got a ton of stuff in here that's very usable. It does have a dedicated IPMI port right here. So it's the Supermicro IPMI port. But tragically, it is running the old Java version of the screen remote connect. And so I can't use it because Java's dead. So that is one unfortunate thing. But overall, it is a great little server and it has been super quiet and really low power draw. You most likely do not need much more than this kind of performance in your home lab unless you're trying to do like crazy things with a Plex or if you're trying to do video encoding. Unless you're dealing with video in some way, that's the only big home lab automation that I know of that takes actual CPU horsepower. And so instead, I would really look at getting a system like this. It is low power draw, repairable, and really cheap. 1U and super light. It is an absolutely awesome server and I'm gonna be able to use it for so many different tutorials and things like that. I've got a bunch of videos planned for this where I'm gonna show you how to set up PF sense, all these different things, and it's just nice having a box that I can take apart and put back together and set up however I'd like to that is just 1U, really light and easy just like this. And so I've been really happy with this so far. I am probably, just because I'm a RAM hog, I'm probably gonna look up and see how much it would be to upgrade this thing to like 64 gigs of RAM just to have a ton of memory in here, maybe 32. And so that way I can run a few more virtual machines in there because generally I'm not CPU limited, I'm RAM limited. But with how everybody's moving to DDR4 and now DDR5 RAM, hopefully I still be able, should be able to find it pretty cheap. But we might get, be getting into a place where it's so rare to have it, it's starting to get expensive. All right, well that is gonna be it for this video because it is stormy outside and I'm sure you're gonna be picking that up on a mic. But go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to make with this thing in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.